Shalom, Shalom, Israel. I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Rakakadash, Rakati Yahweh, Rakati Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the most high God in Yahweh Shai to the world. Even we call it Jesus Christ. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of great millstone who will rule the world to the spirit, teaching his word and believing his word to the best of their ability. Lord, we're going to most high continue to put in their spirit to endure. Mighty Shalom to the whole poor elect scattered four corners of the earth in and out of congregations, teaching his word and believing his word to the best of their ability. Lord willing, the most high continue to put on a spirit to endure. Shalom to the wives and the single sisters that believe in his word. Lord willing, the most high continue to put in your spirit to pursue to be a loving and silent and virtuous wife. And Lord willing, the most high have mercy of other brothers and sisters that's not in the faith. What you see on the screen um, is a quote by Theodore Roosevelt. It says, a, thro a thorough knowledge of the Bible is worth more than a college education, you know? So a thorough knowledge of the Bible is worth more than a college education. And that is a full effect because even when you go into college um, to think that you're building a career, you most of us don't even leave college to really be in that career but outside even if you is in that career or not nothing can get you further in life than the knowledge that's in the bible right so i'm gonna start off with um the real simple uh clip that everybody brings out you know this is matthew chapter 4 verse 4 which you can see in deuteronomy um i believe um eight and four but you most likely will start at eight and three this is uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. It says, I'll start at 1. It says, Then said Yahweh Shai, Salaki, then was Yahweh Shai laid up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward in hunger. And when the temper came to him, he said, If thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You know, we should really be living our lives off of every word that is perceived out of the mouth of the Most High. Uh, words that was directed to them uh, out, out of the Most High, but the Most High always used the men of the Lord to speak on his behalf. So everything that the men of the Lord is is speaking, you want to listen to, right? Regardless if it's prophecies, if it's uh, building up your attribute, you know, first I want to bring this, this one back out. This is Ecclesiastes, I mean, Salaki, not Ecclesiastes, Ezekiel. Uh, where do I want to go? Ezekiel 33, verse 33, it says, when this Cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet had been among them. Right? So every teaching that the men of the Lord is truly teaching, right? Especially when we talk about prophecies, it will come to pass. That even lets you know what type of teacher you're dealing with because the men of the Lord is going to be occupied in prophecies. You know, um, especially when prophecies is about to come into play when you see signs. Like a brother that I was watching yesterday from the DMV, he said, when things come to pass, you should be turning up, not turning up, let's party, you know, turning up as in uh, flooding, flooding the YouTube, flooding your social media with videos. Low well enough to do a live uh, later on, you know, because they've been hitting me since I've been reading the chapters while I'm at work and doing the best I can at home. It's been hitting me more to, to know that. This is not for the weak. This is not, this truth is not to be playing, to be played around with. We're not here to, to, to be the joke. We're not in here for popularity demand. We're not in here to be the best nigga. We're not in here to, to look at our brother. How much righteousness you got? No, this is about us building ourselves up. Benaya, you know, he built up. You need the Lord to build you up spiritually and mentally. You know, and just like what Theodore Roosevelt, you know, a thorough knowledge of the Bible is worth more than a college education. And that's why us as men should be moving with with, with the mindset of that eloquent, 
right? Um, where did I want to go to, right? Because we want to set ourselves on this wisdom, right? Let me go to this, what I always bring out, which is Sirach chapter 6. You know, this is uh, Sirach chapter 6, verse 18. My son, gather instruction from thy youth up. So shalt thou find wisdom till thy old age. And when you come in the truth, you really are a babe, you know. So every uh, every every week, every day, every month, every year, you should be growing in the spirit, you know. And and the number one thing that we do is I'm going to go back to that is this, you know, this was what really inspired me to come here. Uh, Second Ezra chapter eight, uh, starting at verse three, there be many created, but few shall be saved. So answered I and said, swallow them down on my soul, understanding and devour wisdom. For thou has agreed to give air and are willing to prophesy. For thou has no longer space than only to live. Live for Yahweh by Shem Yahushai. Right? And only a few are going to be saved. And what are the few going to do? You're going to swallow down the understanding of Yahweh by Shem Yahushai and devour wisdom. And they're going to have more of a college mindset than anybody that's actually pursuing the going college. Not saying that you shouldn't go to college, but the scriptures of the Lord is what's going to get us into that kingdom. The scriptures of the Lord is going to have us be separate from this world. The, the, these scriptures are going to have your wife loving you better, right? If if the spirit is moving with her, right, it's going to have you leading better, right? Uh, back to Sirach chapter 6, verse 19. Come unto her, which is talking about Sophia, wisdom. Come unto her as one that ploweth and soweth, and wait for her good fruits. But thou shalt not toil much in laboring about her, but thou shalt eat of her fruits right soon, right? And the fruit is the sheep, right? Because we coming in this door as shepherds. If it's drawing you to teach, I'm over here at work like, damn, is the Lord going to allow me to do another video? Lord, like, what video? I... I got my mind. I'm, I've been so lucky. I've been so busy on just reading chapters, getting into the history of us that most of the time I'm I'm just free. I'm just freestyling when it comes to these lessons off of things I'm seeing in the week or things that I'm hearing. You know, mostly I'm trying to open up my gifts. I'm trying to get better with my gifts, especially when we go to camp on Saturday to be able to flood that out, to be able to to uh, observe what brothers are bringing out and all the things that I've been building myself on into reading, but somehow the Lord allowed me to still be able to lay me off of what brothers is bringing out in camp. But this ministry is not just a one day thing. This is every day, the spirit, you want the spirit to flow upon you, right? This is why a thorough knowledge of the Bible, you're gonna be flood with knowledge and wisdom and understanding, man. We're gonna be flowing with that with that honeycomb right and dropping down to verse 27 it says search and seek and she shall be made known unto thee and when thou has good hold of her let her not go we can't let this beautiful woman go right because wisdom is uh so precious to us man right? you know that's why you go all the way back to, um, I'm going to go to Proverbs and I'm going to read this prologue, right? And it, it's going to hit you, right? It says, the key word in Proverbs is wisdom, the ability to live skillfully. That's what wisdom does. When you gain wisdom, your mind becomes skillful. You understand how to make better decisions, thought process, how to deal with your wife, how to deal with your household, how to deal with that work. Sometimes I even, my brother Yarmaya would have to curry, hey, yo, yo, hey, don't let your scriptures be shown at work because somebody might say something, you know, or don't be just teaching out in the open, you know, these things, yo, we, we need wisdom to be even more sharp, to be skillful on how you teach, be skillful on how you move outside, just like with the video I said yesterday, the more we will wisdom, the more skillful we are when it comes to teaching. Some brothers just want to use yelling at people. Oh, brother, you wear Nikes. Oh, you you worshiping somebody else or how 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 we want to make jokes and then flip over. Hey, let's debate you. Hey, no, 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 no. hey, meet me over here and then I debate you on that cause. But we don't want to 
go forth and bring edification. Show somebody where they're wrong and then show them how they can get right. And then if you get right, this is where the Lord can lead you. Right. That the scripture, especially with wisdom, is going to make you skillful. It says maintaining a godly life in an ungodly world. This is what wisdom help us with. And since we're so weak in the flesh, you want to always work on your skills so that you could be more godly. However, it is no simple assignment. In Proverbs, the Most High provides instructions for how his people are to deal with the practical affairs of everyday life, such as how, um, such as how to relate to him, parents, children, neighbors, and government. Now, if we say we want to be the elect, the elect don't move like niggas. The elect is not in here trying to be better than their brother. They're trying to be better than they self. And they're trying to uh, put their hands in wherever they can fit in. Right. It says Solomon and other authors used a combination of poetry, parables, which is earthly stories in heavenly matter. Um, pity questions, short stories, wise examines in a strikingly memorable form to provide a divine perspective necessary for a person to live faithfully and handle life uh, issues, right? And this helps us go even further with understanding who is wisdom, who is wisdom for, right? Wisdom is going to make you eloquent so that you can teach this word right from the gospel, the sister milk, the parables and the dark sayings and the prophecies, because this is not only about law. This is about the prophecies. This is about the fulfillment. Right. This is about Yahweh Shai. This is about our power. Right. And if we was really walking the way and moving in the spirit, it it would be way more. It would be way more uh, edification going out. More brothers would be uh, uh, moving in more of a motion to feed the flock. You know, we wouldn't really be having a mindset of popularity demand. But when you go into the scriptures, of especially John the Baptist, we go to Matthew, the third chapter, I believe he goes in and talk about the Pharisees and Sadducees, which are a generation of vipers. And we have that today, which we need to decipher these scriptures to be able to teach all spectrums of this word. You know, Lord willing, this is edifying, Lord willing, I could tap in this again because this is a very important uh, lesson right here. You know, a, a thorough knowledge of the Bible. Is worth more than a college education. And I didn't get to tap in too much, you know, but Lord willing, this was edifying straight to the point. With that, I'm going to just say Shalom, Kwame Shalom.